Now we're coming into the home stretch. If you turn to page 84, by the way, um, depending on where, when, where do you receive communion? Well, that a lot depends on where you are in the church. And if there's someone else who can lead the singing. Some places, if the cantor is down front, the cantor may go and receive communion first, and there may just be silence for a few seconds. Mm-hmm. Or somewhat, or if you have another person at the cantor stand, they may weep. Yes? Sometimes um, we go up the, right at the beginning of the communion, then we run back. Yeah, as, as long as yeah, you try to do things with decorum. But yeah, there are others. I go last, and and some and in some places the cantor goes last, and in some places, although it's not ideal, if the cantor's up in the loft, he or she may go to communion after the service. Or you could just simply start singing something that everybody's got, you know. If if you were yeah, if you were blessed with with a self actuating congregation that you can start them singing. Oh, then then they. But that does mean that you may, if that's the case. You as cantor may be leading the service from downstairs or from somewhere you aren't normally standing, so you might want to take a book with you if you need it. Okay, just think ahead and be prepared. So, when communion ends, the priest blesses with a chalice, and we sing, "We have seen the true light." Two different possibilities. There, it's the hymn is marked in the books as tone two, but there's two kinds of tone two we can use: tone two samalasan. Or tone to Bolhar. Both of these are recorded on the website. During Pascha, we sing We Have Seen the True Light. Or sorry, we sing Christ is Risen from the Dead Instead. And the priest incenses the gifts, and that is the end end of communion. Okay, the, the chalice is back on the side altar. And now we move into our thanksgiving. May our mouth be filled with your praise, O Lord. Okay, I would expect everyone knows the first one. May our mouth be filled with your praise, O Lord. Show of hands. Everybody. May our mouth be filled with your praise, O Lord. Show of hands. Almost, we almost everybody. May our mouth be filled with your praise, O Lord. For the departed, show of hands. Still a fair. Okay, so there are three versions that you can use. And those letters mean something, as we'll see in a minute. Okay? Uh, then arise, let us worldly thank the Lord. So we had a hymn of thanksgiving, and then a, a litany of thanksgiving. And then the priest says, let us go forth in peace. Probably some of you have heard the joke. How do you know you're in the Byzantine rite? Because when the priest said, let us complete our prayer to the Lord, it means you have 15 minutes left. Yes. Okay, the priest says, let us go forth in peace, and then he goes out in the church, and then he comes back to the sanctuary. Well, the reason is that he says the prayer before the embon, that's the platform in the middle of the church, and at one time, on his way out of church, he would stop and recite a prayer for this particular feast day, or Sunday, or saint's day. That's the prayer right here that's introduced with let us go forth in peace. And the celebrant going before the embon and facing east intones the embon prayer. That's the we're heading out of church prayer. Okay? And then the faithful sing, blessed be the name of the Lord. That's their response. Now let's look at the melodies. The A melody here, blessed be the name of the Lord, matches May our mouth be filled with your praise, O Lord. So, you use one, you can use the other. And then the B one is the same way. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Okay? Now, there's a C version here, which breaks the pattern. Because the C, may our mouth be filled, was for the departed. And here there's one inserted in the middle. Blessed be the name of the Lord, now and forever. Now, this is one that is customarily used on feast days, where there's going to be Miravania, with the priest singing it the first time, and the faithful singing it two more times. So, it's not restricted to those, and it's not required on those, but I tend to save it for those feast days with anointing or kissing the cross or something special at the end. Okay, And then you could use either one of the versions of May or Mouth Be Filled. And then finally at D, we have the one for the faithful departed. 
Blessed be the name of the Lord. Okay? So this is a place where the letters kind of matter. If you use, you know, if you can match up the may or mouth be filled with the blessed be the name, it's nice. And of course, some people will sing the Bortnianski or, you know, something else here, the choir version. Yeah. Yeah, like that. And then the priest gives the final blessing. And there's the dismissal. Now, one thing to notice about this, um, at Vespers and Matins, when we sing the dismissal, the, the priest sings, uh, glory to you, and the people sing, glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever. Amen. Now, that's on do. But here, we're singing up higher on me. Okay? We're seeing a third higher. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Okay? And ever and forever. Amen. And then you repeat. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Give the blessing. Now, many, many years ago, when the seminary had a hundred students at once, in the 1960s, they had a huge, well, the 50s and 60s, they had a huge choir. They had a great choir at the seminary. And they sang this in harmony, and the alto part, which is lower, became the version that everybody thought of as the proper way to sing this. So the reason that with the music that preceded the Green Book, people sang it down lower was because they were used to hearing that alto part. Okay? This has restored the, tr the older musical tradition that in Lent we sing kind of a sad glory to the Father. And at Vespers we sing a kind of ordinary glory to the Father. Okay? And on Sunday, uh, uh, sorry, at the Divine Liturgy, we sing it up a little bit. Now that means you have to hit that third pretty cleanly. Glory, say glory to you, Christ our God, glory to you, glory to the Father and to the Son, give them to the Holy Spirit. Think really high. Okay, think higher, you will go flat. Yes? Yeah, Jeff, when they put it into notation as this melody, as the main leading voice, starting yeah. on a, a me, or yeah. so they should do, put also the last measure on a B flat. You know? When it did go down to the to the second order. Yeah, that's, that was the manuscript tradition in Slavonic that they were following. Okay. Was the way they were doing it at the time. Um, so, we get to that point. We have that, again, the long amen at the conclusion. And there's still a few more things to do to tie everything up. Uh, if the liturgy is for the departed, we sing eternal memory. Okay. If the liturgy is for, or if it's a solemn occasion, we sing many years. And this is something that a lot of people miss. And the priest may commemorate a whole bunch of groups of people or individuals. And you sing God grant them many years for each of them. But you don't sing in health and happiness till the end. Okay? That's you, and that requires either knowing what the priest is going to do or watching to see if he's going to commemorate anyone else. Okay? And it's easy to miss. If you screw up, then you sing in health and happiness multiple times. But very often, you know, it, you, you're kind of stepping on the priest's lines if you do it too early. So, you know, watch his, watch his lips. Yes? On this one, of course, it's God grant them many. Sometimes they put another note in there. Yeah. Many. That's what I, what I called earlier a cantorism. Yeah, yeah, sometimes people put in you little put other, uh, no, ornaments. In between those two. Yeah, put in ornaments. Mm -hmm. I don't know which one. Yeah, and, well, and the, the Paschal Trapari, and there, there are other places where... How do you get the congregation to stop saying, God grant us? Oh, uh, I, I hear that in our yeah. church all the time. God yeah. grant us. I keep saying, God grant them. It says them in the book. It, I say them. Well, and it, it's just, honestly... Yeah, I the question the question of God grant us many, God grant me many. No, I, I would my personal. Now I, I don't make rules for this. Okay, I would say you always sing God grant them or him. If it's for you, don't sing it. Just smile and pray. Okay, you know if, it, if it's for you, if it's for you individually. If 
for example, if I if, if the priest offered the, the many ears for all the cantors present, then I would happily sing God grant them, meaning everybody else, yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah, right. Everybody else is praying for you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, yeah, I, uh, what do you do when the congregation does it? Just keep doing it the way you do it. Don't. I, know, sing, it, I sing it correctly. But yeah. They don't, they uh, follow me. They yeah, follow don't. Me. Again, you don't try to impose your way. Now, if the priest wants to make a point about it, but I would. No. no. I, I don't would. say anything. No. Okay. So, um, finally, especially if there is no many years or eternal memory, You've the service has ended. Okay, there's still people in church. Uh, I like to finish with some kind of singing after the service. Uh, it keeps people from breaking out into too much conversation. Some people are still saying their prayers. There are people who actually say the post communion prayers in church. So what I will tend to do is sing a feast day hymn or a Marian hymn if once appropriate. In one parish I was at, they always sang the Kentuckian of the patron of the church. In this case, it was uh, St. Mary's Holy Protection. So we would just sing the Kentuckian of the Holy Protection, and it was nice, and it sounded good. It was a little bit of prayer at the end of the service, and it, you know. Our priest always leads Mary and him. So yeah, that's my and what, just as, you know, any, anything like that is, is fine. And you know, it's, there is nothing wrong with not doing it, but I think it, it helps the prayerful attitude in the church. And it gives you a place to sing the things that maybe we used to sing during the liturgy that we don't anymore. So we don't lose those. Um, any questions? Yes? Um, is there music available for some of the harmonies, for like the Profession of Faith and Charlie Kim? There, the you have there are. Well, okay. On the MCI website, there's an entire class on harmonizing a liturgy, which is recorded. Okay, but I will give you the short form of it. All right. Um, on the MCI website, for the basic divine liturgy and a few other things, there are SATB choir settings okay, that you can use. The problem is, it's not really a problem, but the situation is there are two ways to harmonize chant. One of them is to follow the rules of Western harmony with four, with three or four parts and avoiding parallel fifths and doing proper voice leading and all of the good stuff. And it sounds really nice and you can hear all four voice parts. It is very different from the way our people harmonize naturally in parallel thirds. You're singing the melody up a third, down a third, the bass is picking out the roots of the chords and people just kind of learn to do that by ear. The problem comes when you have both things going on together. If you have natural harmony and you have choir harmony, they tend to really clash. Okay? So, I personally, I do not mind seeing choirs at all in churches as long as they don't take over the singing from the people. Uh, I like natural harmony even if done by choirs. We're hoping to come up, and I'm working with uh, a couple of people, including some, uh, including a, a, a choir director in Ohio, to come up with some natural harmony settings of the chant along with the choir settings, and people can choose which ones they want to use. 